All right, so we created our variables to hold the x, y, and z position, and then we iterate over uh, each vert, and we get the x, y, z position, and we sort of add them all to our x pause. And then once all of the the verts have been sort of processed as far as their x, y, z position goes, we can leave the list of verts and go back into kind of our main face list here, and we will say uh, x pause equals whatever the current value of x pause is divided by the number of verts that we had. And we'll do the same thing here for y and for z. And I want to make sure that I'm sort of maintaining my capitalization here so all the p's here are capitalized. So if I were to print x, y, and z pause here, the final values, it would not really mean much because I have no idea whether or not those values actually line up with where the face centers happen to be. So what I'm going to do is actually create a locator. And here's our code for that, space locator. Uh, and I'm going to position that locator at the center of all of the faces. Now, when I look at the locator, it looks kind of big. So I'm actually going to just make this cube a little larger so the locators don't crowd too much. So my command here is going to be mc.spacelocator. And what it wants for its argument is a position. So we will say x pause, y pause, and z pause. And if you're ever, you know, curious about the the format of whatever a, a um, function is looking for in terms of uh, what to feed it, you can just fire up the command documentation and then find at the bottom an example. And here we can see our one argument is going to be p, which of course stands for position. And then it needs to be fed kind of a bracketed, or sorry, a pr uh, a three values inside of a, of a parentheses separated by commas, which is what we have here. So let's go ahead. I want to make sure I don't have any print statements here. Don't need those anymore. And uh, when we run this, hopefully we'll get little locators at all of the face centers. Great. Okay. So there we go. So this is a, a really, really nice way to quickly confirm that our math all kind of works out and we're getting what we expect to get. So let me go ahead and, and uh, delete these. I'll go to the outliner. So now that I know the code works, I definitely do not want to be putting locators all over the geo. What I want to do is actually capture the X, Y, and Z position for each face in a list. So I am going to make a little thing here, that call, uh, a list called uh, face centers. And we'll set it equal to uh, X pause, Y pause, and Z pause. So at this point, we basically have a nice little chunk of code here that performs a pretty useful task, which is giving us our, our face center coordinates. We need to sort of put it into a function so that we can apply it to uh, basically reuse it for whatever mesh we happen to have selected. So I'm going to go ahead and sel select pretty much the whole thing, sort of starting at face count. I'm going to tab it over, and I'm going to define a new function. We'll call this get face info. And we're going to need an argument here. What our argument is going to be, what is the object? So what are we working on here? So I'm going to grab this code. This is just where we got the selected name of our object. So now if I wanted to run this code, what I would need to do is just include get face info and then include as my uh, my argument whatever the selected object happens to be here. So this is probably fine. It's not going to confuse Python that these are the same, but I'm actually just going to do this just to kind of keep keep this from getting a little bit too confusing. So I've got get, uh, get face info and our argument is going to be cell which is going to be whatever the selected object happens to be. And then for every place in the code where we have object, it's just going to come up here and say, well, what did, what got plugged in when we called the function? 
So everything should work fine now, except we have a little bit of a problem, which is what I want is a list of all of my face centers. And at this point, I don't have any way to gather that data or return it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new list up here called, uh, let's see, what did I call the one down here? Face center. I'm gonna call this face info and we'll set it equal to an empty list. So basically I'm all this stuff here is gathering the face center information for each face. So once that's all done, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is append, sorry, face info dot append face center. So we have this empty list at the beginning of the code and each time we process each face, we end up with our face center list. I'm gonna add that list to our empty list up top, face info here. And then once everything is done, I'm gonna tab over one to the, uh, to the left here, which basically leaves our, the face section of our for loop. So once we've talked to all the faces, gathered all of the XYZ centers and uh, put them on a list, we will return face info. And we can just double check that this works by coming over here and running the code. We'll say deets equals get face info. This is probably a dumb uh, variable, but whatever. And then I'm gonna come over and print deets. So what we should get is a list of, basically a list of a list, uh, or a list of lists. So let's just run it. Great, okay. So what we can see is we've got two brackets so this first list here is the X, Y, and Z position of the first face that we hit. And then this uh, next uh, list, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, so on and so forth until we get to the end of our list where we can find we have two brackets. So this is just a, a list of lists where the, uh, the first face of our selected mesh, this is the center of that face. So now that we have this, we can basically make two lists. Well, we can make as many lists as we want, depending on how many pieces of geometry we have selected. So what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate my cube and we will delete one of the faces. So, and I wanna kinda of put them back into the same space. I can probably zero this out too. Great, okay, so I have two cubes. One of them is just missing one of the faces. And I'm gonna select them both here. And we've got, so we'll have select, let me go ahead and actually get rid of this just for a moment. So I'm gonna print cell and we'll take a look at what the output is. Hopefully this is as expected. We have a list of two objects. So when you make code, you can kind of set rules. So like what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just make sure that two objects are selected. And if they're not selected, I'm gonna flash a little error. So I will say something like, if the length of the selection does not equal two, then we'll, we'll flash a little error here. And uh, there's actually a really neat little code, a uh, snippet of code that'll, that'll make a pop-up that the user actually has to read and then click a button. And, and uh, I think that's probably the best way to ensure that you are getting uh, compliance with the uh, basic rules of your code is if, if uh, there is a problem, sometimes you can put an error, but sometimes the users will not notice it. So it's a very good idea in my opinion to sort of like flash all something up. So we will take a look at that, a little bit of code uh, as well as how to, do our little measurement between our lists uh, in the next video.